Hi everyone, welcome to part 2 of Physics Constraints. Here you're going to learn a little bit about the point-to-point, -point, cone twist, and rope constraint types, so you can make cool projects like these ones. Let's start off with point-to-point. -point. This is one of the most versatile constraint types, as there are many different ways you can use it. So here I have this animation of a barrel heading towards my ceramic horse here. I'm going to add in my constraint and see what happens right off the bat. Always remember to set your constraint limits to free, so you can see the most pronounced results first. You'll see that the horse, when bumped by the kinematic object, will spin around on a central axis. This is because that's where the pivot point has been set. You'll see that it spins around the central axis in all directions without limit. The same thing happens if I set the pivot point to the top, except now the horse will rotate around that point. Likewise with the bottom. Okay, now here I'm going to create a ninja weapon from these two components using the same constraint type. I'm going to make sure this section on the top of the screen is set to kinematic and that the mesh is a cylinder. The lower section is going to be set to dynamic and that's the section I want to apply my constraint to as well. So I'll go ahead and do that, free up the movement ranges, and then set my target to the upper section. When I play back, you'll see that nothing will happen. This has to do with the pivot points being in the wrong place again, so let's get everything connected properly. First what I'll want to do is use the align tool to get my two sections on exactly the same plane. I'll just align them on the proper axes and then move the dynamic section over to connect with the kinematic section. The next thing I want to do is adjust the pivot points now. You can see that when I use the template pivot point indicators in the modify panel, I still can't get it to the joint where I want it to be. So this means I'll have to manually edit the pivot. I can do that by selecting edit pivot and then manually sliding my object's pivot point down to where I want it to be using the gizmo arrows. I'll do the same with my kinematic object here, and when I play back, you can see that now the dynamic object will now fall down and rotate around the pivot point. But you can see that it's going through the other kinematic object a bit. There's a couple of ways you can fix this. The first is by toggling collision settings, however you can also set the limits of the axis rotations as well. That's what I've done here, and you can see the result when I use the prop puppet tool now. On all the axes, the limits have been set so that the dynamic section won't go too far. Okay, now for the cone twist constraint. You can see here that I have a dynamic object, which is the cage, and a kinematic object, which is the pole. I've already set both the pivot points, so we don't need to worry about that this time. I'm going to go right ahead and apply my cone twist constraint to my dynamic object. Now, the cone twist range values are a bit different. The twist angle goes around the top and revolves around the x-axis, so remember to set that where you want your prop to twist around. You can set this to up to 180 degrees. The other two values are the radius angle for the base of your constraint, and set the limit for how far the base of your prop can rotate. Since this is a cone twist constraint, you can only set these to a maximum of 90 degrees. I'll set the twist angle to 180 first to give full freedom to my twisting movement. When I do my prop puppet of the pole first, you'll see a very rigid cage not really moving much at all. If you want more freedom for rotation but less twisting, then use a point to point constraint. I'm going to go right ahead and apply my cone twist constraint to my dynamic object, then choose the target, and select my pole from the content manager. When I select lock radius Y, you'll see that every time I change my cone radius, the Y value will also change. This is convenient for keeping a perfectly circular base radius. Let's set a lower value here, and also toggle on the collision constrained object setting, so the cage doesn't go through the pole that's supporting it. 
can see when I pop it now that I get a more realistic result. If I want, I can also set my connection as breakable. When I do that, and move my kinetic object with enough force using the prop puppet, the cage will go flying off its connection. Okay, let's get on to rope constraint now, which is one of the most fun to play with. I have a green sphere here on the bottom that's dynamic, while my blue sphere is kinematic. I'll once again repeat the procedure and give the green sphere a rope constraint. I'll then select my blue sphere as a target. When I do that, you'll immediately see a black colored line drawn between the two objects. Right away, I'll get into puppeteering my blue sphere to demonstrate the results. You'll see that the rope will create a bond between the two spheres, and the green one will bounce along behind the blue one like it's on sort of a bouncy leash. So let's check out the values for rope constraint here. The first one is mass. When I put the mass up to 20, you'll see that my green ball will act a lot heavier in its natural physics reaction to the puppet motion, with less bounce and more pull on the rope. Let's put that back down to 1 for the time being. What I want to do to make things a bit more exciting is to use multiple duplicate on my green sphere to create a bunch of other ones that will bounce off each other. So I'll just go up to my multiple duplicate tool and adjust the number of spheres I want and their distance and rotation values, and then press OK. Now once I've done that, you'll see that they all have the same physics values as the original one, but there are no lines connecting them to the blue sphere. To show the lines, I simply need to select Redraw, and now all the connections will appear. Okay, the first setting I'll change this time is Segment. This essentially dictates how many segments the rope will have, so I'll put this to 1 to show a cool effect. At a segment value of 1, the spheres will not bounce at all, as if they are on a rope, and rather orbit at a fixed distance. If I put this value up higher, you'll see that when I use Motion Puppet this time, the ropes will be much looser and more detailed, allowing for more bounce and directional change. Next up is the damping value. I'll set that to a higher value as well, and you'll be able to see quite a discernible effect where everything almost seems like it's in water, and there's a lot more resistance and delay on the rope movement and sphere descent. Next up is the stiffness value. You can get a good idea of what this does as I put it down to 1 here and start my puppet motion. The spheres will immediately drop off the screen as if there's barely anything holding them up. If I move slightly, the spheres will follow some pretty exaggerated movement paths. So essentially if you decrease the stiffness, the ropes will just turn to jelly. The next value is iterations. This essentially dictates how much resources are used to calculate rope appearance and path. When this value is set to really low, you'll see some sloppy constraint results like this one here. Notice the ropes are not even really connected to the sphere at most points. So let's go put the iteration value up a bit higher here. Notice now that the results look a lot cleaner and better calculated. The ropes are connected in the right places, and their movement looks a bit stiffer and less sloppy. If you want, you can make the ropes invisible by toggling the visible value on and off. And you can also change the color as well, like I'm doing here. I'll just select the reddish color and continue on. On the bottom, you can also see the option for collision. This has the same effect as regular physics objects, and you can set certain objects to not collide with others. Notice that the rope constraint automatically toggles the breakable option on, as well as setting collision with constrained objects as well. So go ahead and fool around with your own rope settings. This is certainly one of the most useful constraint types, and literally has millions of different applications in any animation project. <laughs> 